So yes, uh, Robert brought uh, the gang from Santa Clara Valley Water District. I'm, I'm one of the gang. I'm going to talk about two. You're going to get two mini presentations. And the work I'm going to show you, I did with my partner, uh, Mitra Reichert. She couldn't be here, uh, but we did a lot of this work together. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is a long-term asset management planning tool. It's a piece of software. And then talk about some of our pipeline condition assessments. So uh, I'm going to briefly go into a bit of uh, background uh, and then uh, the two topics. So uh, here we are. We're the wholesaler for the county of Santa Clara. And uh, to the south, uh, uh, you may see San Benito County. Um, that's relevant because of a project I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Um, and we have a, a complex network of assets. So to supply water to about 1.7 million people. We've got uh, a set of reservoirs, pump stations, many miles of pipelines, water treatment plants, um, at recharge ponds, streams and creeks. And uh, we have uh, about 50% of our water is imported. And uh, a good portion of that comes in from the uh, south uh, east from the San Luis Reservoir. So that, that water body, uh, I don't know, if I, how does the pointer work? Does that do it? No, I have to point this way. That, that water bottle. Um, so uh, a little bit about our background. We've got two databases. Maximo, it's our SEMA MMS. Uh, that's where we uh, create work orders. We document the maintenance and the replacement of assets. We also have AMPT, which I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit later. That's our asset management planning tool. And that's where we describe the management strategies so these are longer term rehabilitation replacement planning, not the more uh, short term um, routine maintenance. Um, and then we schedule the future work and then also look at those financial commitments for that work. And this is a custom piece of software. Um, we uh, have a, a company that created this for us. And what it allows us to do is plan all of our work. and so. Uh, every year we have a five-year plan for work and what is done is discussed with the uh, maintenance and operations people and uh, we need to uh, prioritize that work with risk and we want to be able to look at our financial commitment. So this is a hundred year plan. So this is approximate, right? A lot's going to change in a hundred years. But there are a lot of little bars there at the bottom, and the, the, the tallest bars are, uh, are um, uh, our source of supply uh, piece. So it, it's broken out with raw water transmission, source of supply, treated water transmission, and water treatment. And the reason that is, is such a big cost is because we have major pipelines that bring that water in from San Luis Reservoir. And these are huge pipelines. Um, so this piece of software um, is, is like Maximo in that it has, these are screenshots, it has a registry, that's the top screenshot, I'm sure you can't read this, but trust me, that's the registry. And it's set up with spreadsheets. And it's pretty simple in that you can just click through it. So it's, it's really easier to use than Maximo. Um, and the screenshot below, is uh, a picture of a management strategy. And so a management strategy basically has one or more activities. The first one, usually the only one, is replacement. And we, we just record the frequency and the total cost with some details. There may be other activities like inspection or coating a tank or um, um, uh, rehabilitation. So with the install date uh, for these assets and the frequency for this replacement or other activities, we're able to forecast uh, all the work. So we can do that for all the assets. This is just a screenshot for a particular uh, pump at our particular pumping plant. And it shows in one of the columns our financial estimate, what we have to do going out into the future for 100 years. Um, so we use this software to help us write an asset management plan 
for the San Felipe Division. So that's where a, a major portion of our water comes in from the San Luis Reservoir. And in particular, so that's inside this circle, um, that it consists of a couple major pumping plants and many miles of large diameter pipeline. And in particular, this asset management plan is for REACH 1, which is the first REACH. And it uh, uh, brings in federal CBP water. Um, it's owned by the, the, the US government, but we maintain it and we share uh, some of the costs with the San Benito County Water District because there's a turnoff for them in the, the county to the south. Um, and so what we did is we have management strategies for these assets, meaning what work do we plan to do, how much does it cost, when are we going to do it? And we met with the engineers and discussed how good are our strategies? Can you give us feedback? And so we took, um, I, I, don't know if this, I don't know if you can see all of that. Um, I think some of it didn't come out very well, but uh, we basically uh, edited the, the strategies by, through these discussions with the subject matter experts and added new activities. Uh, this is for this large diameter pipe. Um, we actually had uh, a portion of this burst a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, so we're, we're really trying to inspect this pipe and uh, come up with more accurate costs. This is a, a picture of the Pacheco pumping plant pumps. These are uh, multi uh, thousand um, gallon per minute pumps. Um, and we also uh, added a lot of detail to the management strategy for these pumps. And uh, by looking at all of the assets in the San Felipe Reach 1, we're able to come up with total costs. We can slice and dice it different ways. Uh, this is just basically by a major uh, subclasses of, of assets, civil, mechanical, instrumentation, electrical. Most obviously is, is civil. And we were able to come up with a 100-year financial plan uh, for uh, this uh, um, San Felipe Reach 1, and the little uh, histogram green is O&M. Uh, the, there's a bit of red for, for maintenance, but um, the biggest piece is blue, and that's capital. And we have some major peaks in here. We actually had it planned out for a year, but we distributed it over several years because we didn't think we could actually do all the work in a year. We had to, had to spread it out. And this is basically to replace um, uh, tunnels and the, the conduit, um, and it's uh, based on age at this point. Uh, so this is very approximate. As we get more information about how long this pipe lasts um, and its condition, we can modify certainly the timing. Um, but it does allow us to come up with uh, a basic uh, investment that we should be uh, saving uh, based on these anticipated costs. So. Um, now I'm going to go into the second uh, presentation, uh, pipeline condition assessments. So uh, our condition assessments is score one through five. And a lot of our condition assessments were typically done with uh, a Yuma, as you heard earlier today. And what we uh, decided to do was just look at that for our pipelines. So in particular, we were looking at the vaults. And we were looking at the information in Maximum. And we were finding some things that we were concerned with. So these vaults, this is how we exercise the valves in these vaults. And if there's a problem with the pipeline, we want to make sure that they work. So we were finding some problems with the documentation. We we're finding some problems with the condition of the valves in the vaults. And we were concerned about how reliable they were. So we started a program in uh, the summer of 2017. And we, want, we had a few goals. We wanted to get a, a detailed condition assessment. We wanted to collect some additional information because we're planning a, a capital project to rehabilitate all the vaults along different pipelines. And we wanted to collect that data uh, digitally in the field. And so our solution was to use a, a mobile app, um, which is the Esri's Survey123. And uh, that data, once it's collected, it's uploaded to the cloud. And then it's easy for us to, to look at that data in the office. Um, and that, uh, it's easy to update the stations or vaults uh, in the software. And 
when uh, the condition assessment is done, there's a location and a set of photographs. So um, this really helped us get good information about the condition of the vaults. There's a lot to implementing this, and I'll just tell you some of the things. Is um, We uh, changed our uh, tablets from um, uh, Surface Pro to uh, 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 iPads. We thought they were much easier to use. They did better in the, the, the heat. They're easy to see. Um, and they're just like many people's phones, okay? So um, we found that much better. We, there was a lot of training involved to have the mechanics uh, use this. Uh, they had to see the value. Um, and we had some technical problems. Um, we needed to reconcile our source data. So one of the things we were finding is that um, the mechanics would go to a vault. They think they're at vault number whatever. They would take their information well, they didn't always know what vault they were at. So they would record the information, but it wasn't always correlated correctly to the correct vault. So to, do, to make sure they knew where they were and so that the records are accurate and appropriate, we created lists and maps for them to take into the field so they knew exactly where they were. And then W-A-D-I-T-W is uh, we always do it that way. <laughs> So we had to overcome some of that. <laughs> um, and then we're collecting data outside of Maximo, outside of AMP, outside of JS. So there's a data management piece here. We collect the data, now what do we do with it? How do we access it? So this is a picture of a set of one of the pages of our maps. We would uh, have an arrow, that's the vault. We'd have a set of photographs. And there's information at the top of the sheet. So Hopefully, they know exactly where they are, and we get good data. Here's a picture of a couple of the screenshots from the survey one, two, three. Basically, there are a set of questions, uh, what pipeline, who you are, you know, and then a set of yes, no questions, and based on those answers, another set of satisfactory questions. So if the answer was no, there's no follow-up question. In some cases, the answer is yes, follow-up question, okay? So all of that information they would collect in the field, they'd upload it, and then we can access it back in the office almost instantaneously. Um, and we have the location, we have all the records, we can export the records, we have Excel table, a shape file, we've got the photographs. So um, we got a lot of detail that we couldn't normally obtain um, and so I'll just sum up with the advantages here is that we got a lot of good information. We, through all of this work, we're really confirming the accuracy of all our records. Um, we're having good dialogue with the mechanics, uh, talking about what they do, why this matters, uh, what do they suggest someone does the next time they put in a valve, uh, you know, what's a better uh, situation in that vault. Uh, some of the lessons learned, um, so, so the advantages are that was, we got, we've got a lot of good data that we can uh, easily access and we can quickly modify the survey. Um, lessons learned is that you have to validate your data. So we had different sets of data. Um, we had to have multiple training sessions. Uh, we had some problems with the, the initial uh, tablets. Um, and there we had to, it's a bit of a culture shift got to convince people that this is worth doing. And then we're planning several improvements. We're going to um, customize, excuse me, customize the survey. Right now it's the same set of questions no matter what vault you're at, so some of the questions don't apply. We'd like to set up a set of maybe four standard vault types. So this is a line valve vault, this is just an ARV vault, this is um, a turnout vault. So we'd have, they could select, okay, I'm at this type of vault, and only those questions would show up. So they'd spend less time saying no to questions that don't really apply. Um, and we've uh, also planning to update uh, our databases with all this information, including our data, uh, JS database. Um, so that's part of that data management piece. Is using, this data is now separate, and we've got to try to get it back into other um, uh, boxes. So uh, that's a real quick talk. Any questions? <laughs> I do. Okay. So 
Yes. Oh, everyone can hear you. I think we've got it on mic. Um, gotcha. Oh, we do? Okay. Um, so I think this is a little bit all around with the uh, W A E I T W, the resistance um, across the board, you know, not just with this, but with record keeping and everything. Do you, I, you probably don't have an answer for this, but how, what are your lessons learned there? What, what worked and what didn't work? Is it just sheer force? <laughs> yeah, that's a great, it's a great question. So I, I'll, I'll back up a little. I find in asset management we're often asking other parts of our organization for information and help. And sometimes it's like pushing string. You know, you don't always see the, the result. So this is similar. Face-to-face um, -face helps. Explaining why you're doing it helps. There are probably some people who aren't really ever going to fully get behind this. And so you try to work with those who do. There is a little bit of a, a, a I have to say, um, uh, a difference in how long someone's been working and how old they are in terms of their comfort in changing what they do and, and, tech, and, and how they work with technology. Um, uh, so they're probably over time the workforce will, will sort of change and, and it may become a little easier for uh, us to get them to take on our new uh, work. Um, you mentioned earlier that um, uh, one of the issues you had um, with the uh, maintenance personnel going, going out to the field to look for a vault is that they didn't know which vault they had to go to. How do you uh, mitigate that? Did you come up with a system to identify any maximum? Um, I, I know it from, from your, from your um, form that they have to fill out that there was a, an ID at the very top for the vault. What, what, what does that mean? I don't know if you can go back yeah. to the screen. So the question is, how, how do we make sure that the, uh, the mechanics are at the correct vault? So the, what we try to do is create these setup maps. So every page is a picture. There's a vault being highlighted. There's photographs. And there's a set of numbers, uh, vault numbers, a description, asset numbers. Um, one thing we did find that even with these, there were still some problems. <laughs> And we're doing some QAQC because we have two pieces of information that help us know where they were. One is the GPS, so we get a shape file, and we can see if that lines up. And we also look at the photographs. We have existing photographs. If the photographs they take look like a completely different vault, then they weren't at the vault they said they were. <laughs> Oh, oh, so the, so the, the vaults all ha, uh, have asset IDs and they're also described by the, the pipeline uh, initials and usually either a pronoun like Cochrane line valve or stationing. Um, they're also vault numbers, so there's different, there are like several different ways you can describe the vault. Talk to the mic, please. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, so, whoops, that's not that one. Uh, I, I, need a, I need training on this. But uh, uh, up here at the top it says uh, E40361, so that's the asset number, then there's the name of the asset, including the station name. So that's, that's been established beforehand. Uh, for all our assets. So it's not a smart ID, it's just a number that, that existed before. It existed before, yeah. Thank you. Oh, so, so that's a literal drop down menu there? <laughs> You're not passing the asset information off a map into your survey? Right, it's just a drop down menu, yes. Could you explain a little bit more about what you're doing with the data that you collected? Is it going back into the GIS and the flow and what the benefits are? Yes, so the, the data, we've got new photographs 
uh, if they're superior, they should go into our GIS. Um, they could go into Maximo. Um, we're going to take all of the, this information. It's going to support um, future capital projects for, for rehabbing vaults. What we do need to decide is how to take all this information and give it a one through five score. We haven't done that. So it's some algorithm, right? It's some, we're going to have to weight it somehow. Um, and then that will go into uh, maximum. Hi, I'm wondering if any of the systems um, communicate with each other. So do you dump information from one, one system to another, or which is your system of record, and which you depend on those to report out? Good, good question. Um, yes, so Maximo is our, our database. Um, Ant is mostly uh, the same registry. Initially, it was supposed to sync. Uh, that did not work out when the consultant created the, the software, and um, so it's done, uh, the registry's kept up manually, um, which obviously leads to some error, room for error. Um, and then uh, the JS isn't really, uh, we do have some information in it, but it's really not something that, that our main record is. It's, 